Welcome back. Our next guests are doing something that I believe all of us would like to do. They are looking back and moving forward at the same time. Ginny Poulos and Terry Butler are here from the movie, The Ten of Us, and they're going to tell us who are the Ten of Us and what are they doing as they move into 2023, doing something new and different and exciting. And that's why we're here to talk about how can 2023 be the most wondrous year for us yet? Ginny and Terry, welcome. Thank you so much Thank for coming. Good day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So nice to be here. Terry, do you want to tell her about what we're doing? Well, what we're doing is um, back in the 1960s, when we were in high school, we had a folk singing group of five guys and five girls. And interestingly enough, called themselves the 10 of us. And we did a lot of performance and had a lot of fun there and then went on with our lives. And we've gotten back together after the year 2020 and um, to reunite what we had before. And we've had the blessing through our fabulous director, Allison Quigley, of making a movie about us um, getting back together and going forward with our lives and helping each other through the phase of our boomer lives, or since we're all 75 years old, we call it sometimes fourth quarter. And it's a very <laughs> We're very, very excited. It's a very inspiring film, as humbly as I can say it. It sounds amazing. And I've seen the photos and the 10 of you, how blessed you are to be all together. And you went your separate ways. You had your lives. And did you stay connected the entire time? Or did you find yourselves coming back together organically in 2020? Well, actually, one of us died. Um, Sally Mowry. And the thing is that when, <clears throat> when we were together singing, I often had other singing gigs that I had to do. So we had one uh, extra person that would step in when I was gone. So we asked her to join us in this adventure when we were all going to have this reunion after 30 years, you know, or 40 years was it? I don't know. Um, I think it was after 40 years. And uh, Terry came to New York and, and took me out to dinner at Jean Georges and tried to convince me that we should go back. And I said, oh, no, you can't go back. You can't go back. You can only go forward. But he said, will you gather up the pink team and I'll get up and get the blue team together and let's see if we can have a reunion. Well, that was the beginning of what's happened ever afterwards. We've been gone back and gone forward. Exactly. Um, because we've been making, you know, we've been. Um, sort of trying to document what we've been doing. Really, we wanted something to play at our funerals. <laughs> but, you know, all the fun we had, you know, but it became something far more serious. And it was because of Terry that people are going to be able to see it. And the people that have seen it have been so overwhelmed with love and gratitude and, you know, feeling that they know every one of us and that they love all of us no matter their age. That's the thing that I find shocking that my great nieces loved it as much as people my own age and older loved it. So um, those people that have come to different film festivals have gotten to see it. And you guys have played it a number of film festivals. You've also won a number of awards. Yes. So share some about that because this is not just some thrown together reunion of friends. <laughs> you guys are really going after this. Well, starting in the year 2000, we decided to get together every year at some city or the other. And uh, back in 2000, we'd gather in a city, find a retirement home and go perform there. We had to stop doing that because the people at the homes uh, started to become much younger than we were. And, um, and so this last year or two, we, we've moved it into a movie and we feel a very deep calling we feel that all of us are, are entering the, the great period of our lives, whether you call it boomer, fourth quarter, autumn, what do you call it? And that we have a special ability of being able to support each other. And the film talks very poignantly about how we support each other. Just this morning, I saw one of the news shows that estimate a million people over the age of 65 uh, live totally alone and unconnected. And the theme of our movie is the joy and the happiness that we have, how we support each other through alcoholism, through estrangement of our children, 
through cancer, through a number of challenges that we have, how we support each other, but more so of how the viewers should start looking, how they can support each other, how they can find friends in their past and reconnect instead of living, as I saw this morning, the sad part of possibly living alone. I can definitely see that that's something all of us should be considering. And, and it doesn't have to be when you're 75. I mean, I live alone. Well, my dog would argue, but you know, we live, we live alone uh, together. But, right. But we, you know, we have a large social circle. We have family and, and all of that's great. It's not true for everyone. And I know that you've supported yeah. each other through death of spouses and moving and retirement and things that are, are big emotional hurdles. Mm -hmm. And to share this with a broader audience, the truth is, as you said, Ginny, it's not age specific. I've lived alone all my life. And so even though I've often been far from family, I've been close to friends. And I know that you guys are across the continent. Terry, you're an attorney in LA. And, yes. and Ginny is a former performer and a business coach in New York City. And I know from reading the bios of the rest of the 10 of you that you're spread still all over the country and doing a variety of amazing things. But Lauren, coming back to that, when we say living alone, uh, I don't mean physically living alone. Many of us physically live alone through one reason or the other. We're talking spiritually, emotionally, and the connectivity of that what we should be able to do is pick up a phone or in this modern world, pick up a Zoom and be able to talk to somebody, connect with somebody. That's really the theme of what we're talking about as our society has moved into marginalizing our, our senior citizens and, and, and our older people. And what we should do is be celebrating this part of our lives and connecting with other people, whether you live 100% by yourself or you live with, it with a larger group, the idea is connectivity. That's you know, what we're one of the things that, I'm sorry, Terry, I didn't mean to step on your last words. You want to finish that? To it. <laughs> That's true. One of, the things, but, um, <laughs> one of the things that that um, has always been a hallmark of our relationships with one another, because we were like we were um, three or four cheerleaders, a lot of band geeks, you know, and and, uh, you know, that the, these guys who were really kind of geeky guys could be with cheerleaders back then. We had so much Fun. And we were up to hijinks all the time. We recorded two recordings in that year and um, just had that, that enormous sense of playfulness and fun. I mean, when I walked into that beautiful home for our first reunion, uh, I looked at these people and the humor was exactly the same. And that we connected on that level right away. It was only later in that reunion that we sat down and really talked about what had happened to our parents and what had happened to our, you know, spouses and our, 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 our brothers and sisters. And uh, we connect, we reconnected all those points in our lives and it became very, both hilarious and tender at the same time. And that's what this film tries to communicate, I think, is that the fun, as well as the the sweet understanding and compassion for other people that we don't much see in, in the United States right now. Uh, you know, we, we don't see that displayed or promoted. And I, I believe that's what's touched a nerve uh, with all the people that have seen it in these various film festivals it, is that they can connect like that. And even while we were filming it, the, the um, film uh, people, the, the, film director and the uh, camera director and the sound director said, gee, I don't have friends like this. And I'd say, well, what's stopping you? You know, call a bunch of friends and get together. Friends from high school, friends from college, just start someplace and you'll lock <laughs> into it. You know, there's another great point, Lauren and Jenny, that of the 10 of us, we've gone through how many presidential elections in the last 20 years? I'm not sure, but not all 10 that politically agree at all. We That's have a couple, correct. we have, we kind of like America. We have some very, very liberal, some very, very conservative, some right down the middle in betweeners. And another message that we think we send out is one can have deep political conservative 
or deep uh, political liberal beliefs and still love each other, get along, laugh with each other, communicate. And that's something wow, our society could really see how we do it. It sounds like the years have given you a lot of compassion and compassion is something that will let you overcome a lot. And I don't disagree with you that the divisiveness that we've been experiencing really needs some of that curiosity and that willingness to listen and be with others, but you have such history that the love really carries you through. And that's what I get from both of you immediately. <laughs> It's so true. It's so true. I mean, to realize that we still had the joy that we had from back then, but to also discover that as adults, we have so much to, you know, our, our quarter of the world, you know, the, the, the 70, the, the fourth quarter is, as Terry calls us, we have so much wisdom to share, you know, and um, I believe that's one of the things that's reconnected us so beautifully. Uh, is that wisdom that each of us, you know, and it's not really respected and, and, and regarded like it is, say, in Japan, if you turn 65, you know, you're, you're regarded as, as a very knowledgeable and wise person and people go to you for, for opinions and information. That's not the case here. And um, so oh, we've made our different. own mission. <laughs> yeah. The culture is very different. That part is true. But the opportunity to open this conversation the opportunity to present it on a large screen, which I know you're working on right now. And I just want to drop in a side note for our viewers, because normally I would open a segment like this with a clip from the movie. But because you guys are in the process of actually selling it to a large production house, we aren't able to put that into the public domain. So I want to encourage our viewers to actually stay connected and keep looking for the movie, 10 of us, because it will be coming out. And we're showing you um, through the segment, you can see the group and you can see the joy, you can feel the connectivity. And it's all because you're willing to be with each other where you are now. Well, you know, Terry starts the film with a, an F. Scott Fitzgerald quote. Do you, have you got that memorized, Terry? No, but F. Scott Fitzgerald did. <laughs> you want to give us a paraphrase <laughs> no it's it's a beautiful line it's a beautiful line from the great author who talks about that life should be connecting and loving and doing and going out there but the last part of it's so fabulous he says you wake up one day you haven't done any of those things you're not connecting with people you're not doing anything you're not following your dreams so hey guess what today is the first day so let's get started it sounds like a wonderful idea. It yeah. sounds just perfect. So before I let you guys go, is there any way that our viewers can specifically track? Should they just keep Googling 10 of us, the movie? How can, how can they possibly, you know, stay with you as you go through this process? Well, the, a number of the film festivals we're involved with are so wonderful that you can pay your $10 and actually see the entire film. Okay. And we're going to have a website, and on the website that may, uh, maybe I can talk to my daughter or granddaughter, she can explain how <laughs> we can go in to the website and figure out where the new festivals are, and well, we can one who's watching this can see the movie themselves. So hopefully, we'll be able to do that pretty soon. Well, well I you know, happy to include all that in the blog post when we put the web when we put the link up on the website also they'll be able to track you from there and we can keep updating that with new festivals and new information. You know, Lauren, we didn't know um, what was gonna happen. And when we uh, were submitted to the LA, uh, um, uh, uh, LA Live Awareness Film Festival, we won for the most, the, the, the full length, most inspiring, uplifting film. And we were out of our seats. Like you cannot believe we felt it was the Academy Awards. And so we're a little behind the curve and we're just now getting our website together. And hopefully we'll have clips eventually that we can you know, hook up there so people can see if they wanna go see it at a film festival or eventually, hopefully in a large, much larger venue. Well, you being behind the curve puts us ahead of the curve because now we're able to stay with you and follow you through your process and your journey. 
and continue into this next next phase with you, which is so exciting. And I thank you both so much for coming to join us and share your story with the Good Day community. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> we love being here. We look forward to seeing you again and doing an update as soon as it's available. Terry, go ahead. The final thought is we're in the fourth quarter, but we look forward to overtime. <laughs> Sure. I, can't, I can't add anything to that. Yes, we do. Thank you so much. God bless. And we'll be right back.